Let's keep going. Now let's look at the molecular level. At the molecular level, similar, not exactly the same to the contractile muscle. First signal from the uh, action potential from the pacemaker cells, now it go to the, the contractile cells. It gonna go through the T tubule. So now let's look at the EC coupling in cardiac muscle. In the T tubule of the cardiac muscles, they have the calcium channel. So this depolarization is gonna open the calcium channel. When they open the calcium channel, calcium is high outside, low inside, so calcium is gonna flow in. And you say this calcium is gonna trigger muscle contraction? Mm, not exactly. This calcium has something more important to do. So calcium, when the first calcium flow in, the calcium, its main job is not to trigger the, the muscle contraction. Its main job is to open the RYR. So in the cardiac muscle, you have the SR, you have a lot of calcium uh, stored inside. The first calcium from the outside, its function is to open the RYR. We open the RYR, the second calcium from the SR flow out. It causes the calcium sparks, and this calcium, the second calcium, will bind with triponin, and triple myosin shine away, acting the myosin, big muscle contraction. We learned this part in skeletal muscle, exactly the same as skeletal muscle. So it's the first calcium trigger the cell second calcium release to cause the muscle contraction. They call it, they call the calcium triggered calcium release. Very unique. This one only happens in cardiac muscle, not in skeletal muscle. So if I ask you the EC coupling, compare the the similarity and difference between the cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle, calcium trigger calcium release only happens in cardiac muscle. Now let's look at the overall picture. So we finished the molecular level. The overall, the, the heart, this is the heart. And those pacemaker cells, they're able to spontaneously generate action potential. Those pacemaker cells, they stay together. So you have those SA node, AB node, internodal pathway, excuse me, internodal pathway, and bundle of branch, picking G fiber, all this. That pacemaker cell. And their firing rate are different. SA node pacemaker cells, they fire about 80 times per minute. AB node, they're slower, about 40 times per minute. PKG fiber, they're still pacemaker cells, uh, they, they generate action potential about 20 times per minute. And they're all connected together. So it turned out the one have the highest action potential rate dominate your heart rate. So if I ask you, your heart rate is dominated by which group of pacemaker cells? And the answer would be SA node. So SA node is the commander and sympathetic nervous system, parasympathetic nervous system. No, okay, they control the commander, they control the whole heart. So the sympathetic parasympathetic innovation in the last slides when we talk about the autonomic regulation, they directly work on the SA node. They don't have to work on the AB node. Uh, sympathetic also work on the cardiac muscle because they want the muscle contracting power also increase. But the heart rate, they work on the SA node. And the signal starts from the SA node and then pass through the whole atria because all the heart muscle, they connected by the uh, intercollected disc, the gap junction. They are able to pass the signal to the two atria. So two atria deploys together. Now the signal go to the AV node. AV node is stay between the atria and the ventricle. In this area, if you took anatomy, you know, okay, this is the areas, uh, the older valves, they stay here. Not just the atrioventricular valve, you have two atrioventricular valves, the left and right. You also have two semi, uh, the semilunar valves, that's between the, the ventricle and the aorta and the ventricle and the, and the pulmonary artery. They're, they're, all, they're all here because the, the aorta go up, the pulmonary trunk go up. So the semilunar valves are all here. So all the four valves, they are here. And these valves, they are connected tissue. They are very tough. They are the skeletal system of the, of the heart. They are not bone, but they are like rubber band. So they, they are that tough. And they are not able to conduct electricity too well. And there is an advantage of it. Because of that, electrical signal can stay in the AV node a little bit. And from the AV node, it's going to pass through the, through the bundle branch, picking G fiber, going to go to the two ventricle. 
because of this AV node delay, so you see the AV node delay, the heart, four chambers, they don't work simultaneously. It's like two atriums work like one cell. They fire together, they contract together, and two ventricles, they fire together, they contract together. And there's an advantage of that. If your four chambers, when we talk about the mechanical events in our next lecture, if the whole four chamber, they fire together, they contract together, you won't efficiently to send the blood from the atrium to the ventricle and then from the ventricle to the aorta and pulmonary artery. You're going to have some blood accumulate. And that's not good because when you have blood accumulate, when the blood is not flowing, the blood think they are staying outside of the body and the platelet. That's the, the, the blood cells in the blood. Actually, the fragments of cells, the platelet, they will start to do the job, which is to cause the blood coagulation. <laughs> gonna form the, the plaque, and they, they're gonna block your blood vessel. So you want the blood to keep flowing. You want to keep blood keep flowing. Because of this AV node delay, it's the SA node is the atrium first. And when the atrium first, you're gonna depolarize then the contract, send all the blood to the ventricle. And when the two ventricles are full, they depolarize the contract and they're able to send the blood to the pulmonary artery and aorta. So the heart work in the sequence, atrium, ventricle, atrium, ventricle, because of the AV node delay. And that's the beauty of the whole system. So you won't have the blood accumulate somewhere. It's when these two ventricles, they are full, they're able to send the blood. So you work in the sequence, atrium and ventricle. If I ask you the electrical conduction, the signal starts from the SA node, it's going to go to the AV node from the internodal pathway. The, the electrical is from the SA to the internodal pathway, to the AV, from the AV to the AV bundle, eventually to the bundle branch. So you found the bundle branch go from the base of the heart and go to the whole, the whole heart. So they're able to contract, squeeze from the button. It's like, there's no blood accumulated here from the bottom part. Squeeze blood out to the aorta and pulmonary artery. To record the electrical signal from the heart, we use the EKG. Uh, abbreviation is ECG, electrocardiography. And nobody in the medical field call it ECG. They all call it EKG because C means cardio. ECG is the EKG. EKG is the the electrical signal from the whole heart muscle. So it's not one actual potential, it's the accumulation of it. And your body is a good conductor in unit one. When we talk about the osmolarity, your body is, well, 60% water. So it's a good conductor. And your heart is a very powerful pump. It generates electrical signal, and they generate electrical signal simultaneously. Because of these two reasons, when we put electro on the surface of the skin, we are able to accumulate, we are able to record the electrical signal from the heart, and that's the EKG. So let's look at the EKG. And to study EKG, we have different lead. So you need to have a negative charge, electrode, positive charge, and every two of them we call the one lead. In the physiology lab, we only have three lead. Keep it simple, keep it simple. Uh, in the hospital, you can have 18 lead, and the EKG is a EKG is a book if you want to study the EKG. And here we just talk about the simplest one. So you have three lead: lead one, lead two, lead three. And uh, each one of them pick up different signal. It's like a, this: the 3D signal. And now you are projecting them to the 2D uh, surface. It's like okay, you 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 your shadow. Your shadow is is from your body, but now it's it's 2D. So it depends on the angle. Uh, you can have different angle of shadow, and each one pick up different information. So you have lead one, lead two, lead three. Lead two, we we use lead two to explain because lead two, you found the signal of the heart come from the atrium to the ventricle, the heart is in this direction. So lead two, uh, that's the best one to, to pick up the signal, you pick up the most information. So when we talk about the EKG in this class, we use lead two signal. And the EKG look like this. Okay, every one second, actually less than one second, finish one. We don't talk about much about the amplitude because this depends on how good the conductivity of your skin and also the place you put on the 
the electrode, but the shape won't lie to you. So we do talk about the shape, and we look at the interval, the frequency. So now let's look at EKG. The EKG, that's the electrical signal of the heart. The signal starts from the SA node, and now the signal passes through the two atrium. Two atrium is a small muscle. It creates a small peak called the P wave, called the P wave. And there's the AB no delay. The AB no delay, there's a small gap. Now the signal goes to the two ventricles. Two ventricles depolarize together, and the ventricle is a huge muscle, so they create a big QRS complex. So QRS complex represents ventricle depolarization. And after depolarization, you have repolarization. Repolarization is the T wave. That's one EKG. So you have a P wave, QRS complex, and T wave. P wave represents the atrial depolarization. QRS represents the ventricle depolarization. And the T wave represents the ventricle repolarization. And you say, where is the atrial repolarization? It overlaps with the QRS. And QRS is huge. So you on the EKG, the QRS covers the atrium repolarization. So you don't have, have the atrium repolarization. So on the EKG, only the P part comes from the atrium. QRS and T come from the ventricle. And now let's look at the interval. The interval. EKG is electrical signal from the heart. It only records electrical events, no mechanical events. Contraction, mechanical events. And you say, well, I see the contraction, contraction here, mechanical events. Yes. It's not because EKG can, can record mechanical events. EKG, because the sequence of the heart work out like, a, like the electrical, electrical trigger mechanical. It's like the car. You, you start the, the engine, battery first, electrical signal trigger the mechanical events. And after depolarization, contraction because of EC coupling. We talk about the, the molecular level, what happens. So we are able to predict when the mechanical events happen. Because the y, uh, the x-axis is the time. It's time. So we are able to predict when the mechanical events happen in the EKG. Not because EKG records uh, mechanical events. It's because the timing we're able to predict. So the P wave on the EKG it tell you that's when the uh, atrial depolarization happens. So after P wave, the interval between the P and QRS, that's when the atrial contraction happens. So mechanical follow electrical. And the same after the QRS represents the atrial depolarization, and between the QRS and the T, that's when the ventricle contraction happens. So that's the EKG. That's the EKG. And EKG is very powerful because that's a real time signal. In clinic, you, you don't have uh, too many data, you are too many recording, you're able to have the real time. So in the ICU, IMC, they, they all have patients that hook up the EKG because it gives you the real-time signal. And we talk about the segment, segment is without the wave, and the interval is with the wave. So there's P, Q, R, S, and the T, and you have the PR segments, and if you like include the wave, there's the PR interval. And EKG is very powerful. Clinically, you can use the EKG to uh, to identify what's the problem. And you can have arrhythmia, they don't they don't work in the correct interval. They can have the hot block, so you have a completely hot block or partially hot block. And uh, hot block is like the, the the traffic they don't go through. So if it's a partially hot block because it takes longer for this uh for the signal to go from the atrium to the ventricle, it's like you have the I-35, okay, you have a car accident, you block two lanes, you only have one lane, so it takes longer for you to go from the wrong rock to Austin. And you still go, you still go, so the signal still go from the SA node to the AV node, so it turned out the interval would be longer. Uh, so between the P and QI, it's going to take longer. This partially hard block. And completely hard block is, is like you have an 18-wheel car accident on the I-35 and it's completely blocked, so the signal won't be able to go through, so the atrium and the ventricle are completely separated. Or fibrillation. Fibrillation is they don't, they don't work together. And when they don't fire together, they don't contract together. So the ventricle fibrillation is much, much more serious compared with the atrial fibrillation because this one means the ventricle don't, don't contract together. 
and you can have more practice in discussion exercise. Okay, let's take a break.